look who's here now. Monica Crowley joins us here on the set in New York City. Okay, if the economy is the top issue in the election, mm -hmm. if it is, can Biden win? No, I don't think he can. And remember, the top two issues fluctuate between the economy and the wide open border. But if it sure. is the economy in the end going into November, no, I don't think so. So President Biden and his team keep going out there trying to sell Bidenomics. Um, and they keep trying to put lipstick on the pig, but the pig is still a pig. Mm -hmm. And it flies right in the face of the American people's lived experience sure. with sky high prices, deeply entrenched inflation, and now rising gas prices. We could have gas price is seven bucks a gallon by the summer. Seven bucks a gallon? Seven bucks a gallon by the summertime. That's if the current it, trends continue, yeah. That, no, no, that's if the Mideast absolutely blows up. You're, well, you're at 363 yes, at the, the moment. Uh, well, it depends where you are in the country as no, well. No, the national average yes. for regular is 363. You're telling me that it's going to double California this summer? is higher. There are a number know, of states where it's higher. The national average is 363. It could very well, Monica, yes. are you seriously sitting there and telling me we're going to have $7 a gallon gasoline? Yes. Absolutely. Then and oil would have to go to $120 and your, your a barrel. Point about, well, your point about the, the Middle East is important as well because we've got heightened tensions there, putting enormous pressures on that market. But the Middle East has to explode before you get $120, $130 a barrel oil and $7 gasoline. Is yeah. that your forecast? Well, it could very well happen. <laughs> yes. And if it does, it's on top of all of the other inflationary pressures that the American people have been suffering through thanks to Biden's out of control spending over the last three okay. years. And now you say look, if the top issue is the economy, Biden cannot win. But Biden's playing very strongly into income inequality. He's railing against the billionaires, and I think that's popular. People are looking around saying, well, they don't need all this money. Biden's going to take it off them and give it to us. That is popular, like it or not. Well, I'm not so sure. I think that that line of argument worked when Obama, Biden were in the White House. But now I think it's a very tiresome line of argument for the American people because it flies in the face of what America is really all about. America is an aspirational society. We don't hate the rich. We all aspire to be the rich. So I think that line of argument is not going to work this time. Okay. Uh, President Biden goes to, I think it's Tampa, Florida next week. Uh, he claims that Florida is a winnable state. Okay. The latest RCP average shows Trump leads Biden in Florida by more than 10 points, I mm -hmm. think it is. Yeah, about 10 points. Is Florida really a swing state these days? No. 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 And Governor DeSantis won re-election by 20 points in, in red Florida. Remember, over the last couple of years, we've seen a great shaking out in the country. So red states have gotten redder because people have moved from the Northeast, from places like Illinois and California, into red states like Florida and Texas. So red states have become redder. Blue states have become bluer. So Biden can talk all he wants about Florida. Florida is President Trump's home state. He will win Florida. That is a big reach. On the flip side, President Trump and his campaign want to put New York into yeah, play. Yeah. And nothing is impossible. It's a big uphill battle. Um, but he's going to put, I think, a number of resources into New York and force Joe Biden and his campaign to defend some of these deep blue areas. He should do a rally at Madison Square Garden. I think he's planning one. I hope so. Yep, <laughs> I'll be question. there. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I'll think about that. Uh, tell me the two most important must-win states for Trump in the election. Which two? Well, there are a number of, of swing states, but to your question, I would say probably Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. Those are the two states where it really is the closest, where they're essentially tied, if not Biden leading by maybe a point. But you can lose one or both of those states if you can put a coalition of other swing states together, like Georgia, Michigan, Arizona. Nevada. Yep. So President Trump is putting them all into play. And the fact that the race is so close in a number of these states tells us that the momentum is with Donald Trump. And it's fascinating stuff. I love, I love politics. I really do. <laughs> Bread and butter of this program. Monica, thanks very much for being Always with us. It was a pleasure. Thanks, yes, guys.